Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. Now I'm gonna try to make this video as quick as I can, but if you've been on my channel for longer than a day, I think you know what that means. So grab your popcorn and your thought juice and get comfortable. All right, so I'm gonna start off by answering the main questions everybody been asking me for the last couple of weeks. Number one, you got yourself an iPhone 13 Pro Max, should you upgrade and get the iPhone 14 Pro Max? Now, usually I would say uh, yes and no, because if you had an iPhone 11 Pro Max and a 12 Pro Max and a 13 Pro Max, every year you're basically buying the same phone with a few minor upgrades. They all look and felt the same. But this year, I would say this is a definite upgrade, okay? I would say definitely upgrade, get a 14 Pro Max. Here's why. You're getting an always-on display. Now, this was one of my biggest gripes with iPhones, no always-on display. Now, you got a fully functional always-on display. Next, you got the Dynamic Island, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Next, you got a better camera, okay, 48 megapixels, as opposed to 12 megapixels, which, on a side note, after doing my real-world testing, the camera's not that much better, but it is better. Okay, your pictures are definitely going to look sharper. So you're getting a little bit better camera. You're getting crash detection, which a lot of people say is kind of gimmicky, but it's just like a seatbelt in your car. You might call a seatbelt a gimmick until you get into an accident. Then you're going to wish you had that seatbelt. Same thing with crash detection, having it on your Apple Watch and on your iPhone. That's a major upgrade. Now you also get SOS via satellite. Okay, again, now it depends on where you live at. If you live in Nevada, in the desert, that's an important feature. And of course, you get the new color choices, which easily separates you from last year's peasant. Okay, so I would say this is a definite upgrade. You're tired of looking at that stupid ass notch on the 13 and the 12 and the 11 and the 10. Now you can look at the dynamic island. So this is worth the upgrade for me. Now, again, if you want some penny pinching type shit, then it's not really that much of an upgrade. I, you don't really have to do it. But I would say this. You only got one life to live. Live your life. Try some new tech. What are you saving for all of this money for? Enjoy your life. Upgrade your phone. Now, in this day and age, the world revolves around social media. All of y'all got side businesses and side hustles. We all using our phones. Why don't you want the latest and greatest? All right, I want the latest and greatest phone in my pocket. I don't care even if it's just a minor upgrade here and there. I want to have the best. And you should too. All right, next question. Now, this is for my Samsung Knights. Okay, now, this video right here is for the Apple Mafia. Okay, so Samsung Knights, I need y'all to stand down and stand by. But I do got to answer this age-old question. Everybody always asks me. This year, okay, Galaxy versus iPhone. Now, all of us, if you're watching this video right now, chances are you a fucking nerd, just like me. We all know that there's more Android phones on the market other than Samsung Galaxies. We know about Xiaomi phones, Oppo phones, Realme, Redmi. Okay, there's a, there's a thousand and one Android phones, Vivo, that make flagship phones. But if you live in the USA, okay, and you're not really a nerd, a lot of people think that this is the number one Android phone, and this is the number one iPhone. So we're gonna keep it Galaxy versus iPhone. This year, which would I choose? If I can only pick one phone, which would I choose? And for me, it's a no-brainer, okay? I gotta go with the Samsung Galaxy S22, okay? Alpha Omega Supreme, AKA Galactus. This is the best all-around candy bar phone out. Now, we're not talking about foldable phones. That's a whole different category. When it comes to candy bar phones, I'm gonna pick the Galaxy. It has way more features, which when I talk about everything that I don't like, I'll give you some examples of why I like the Galaxy better. It's just an all around better phone in my opinion. I, my humble opinion, I would go with the Galaxy. But I would say this, if you had an iPhone 11, an iPhone 12, an iPhone 13, instead of going out and buying a 14, why don't you try the Galaxy S22? Try some different phones because you might not know that some of these features on these galaxies you're going to love, but you don't know because you never use them, such as Bluetooth S Pen. Now, you might not know how important it is to be walking around taking notes. Okay, you're driving around, maybe you're at work or you're in a meeting taking notes. 
right from your phone with an S Pen, using the Bluetooth S Pen to whop, switch videos, raise or lower the volume, taking selfies, using this as a remote control. You might not know that some of these features are epic, but you just haven't tried them yet. So I would say every two or three years, switch from iPhone to Galaxy, switch from Galaxy to iPhone, switch it up. And in this day and age, these phones, you can buy used phones, why not have two phones? This is, in the era that we're in now, it's good to have two phones. You don't wanna have your whole life wrapped in one phone. You wanna have two phones, play with both operator systems, see which one you like best. There's some things about the Galaxy I like better, some things I do like better about the iPhone. But I like to use both, I B O F both. But if I can only pick one, it would be the Galaxy. Next, now, let's get these uh, bullshit phones out of the way iPhone 14 and 14 Plus. I'm not gonna do a full review on these because these are basically just repackaged iPhone 13s. Okay, so all you gotta do is look at my iPhone 13 video. These are exactly the same. But I will touch on one topic. Now I was taking some flack the other day when I made my unboxing for the 14 Plus, and I said if you buy this phone over the 13 Pro Max, you're a fucking idiot. That's what I said in that video, and I stand by that statement. Now, here's some of the flack that I caught, but before I tell y'all that, ladies and gentlemen, late, but still great, White Shoes is back in the building. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white, white shoes. shoes. Calm down. Okay, 14 Plus versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now look, I do understand in some situations, you might not be able to get your hands on a 13 Pro Max because Apple ain't stupid. Soon as they dropped the 14 Plus, they immediately took the 13 Pro Max off of the Apple website and out of rotation at most of the stores. So if you wanna finance your phone, you might not be able to go in T-Mobile or Verizon and finance a brand new iPhone 13 Pro Max. If you want a 6.7 inch display, your only option might be the 14 Plus for around this price, I get it, I get it. Or maybe you don't like shopping on eBay Maybe you don't wanna buy used phones, which even though I did show y'all on eBay, they got brand new iPhone 13 Pro Maxes sealed in the box for 850 bucks. Now, I understand you might wanna finance your phone, but if you got cash, say you, now also you might live in a country that you can't get your hands on an iPhone 13, but I get it, I get it. But let me talk to my people in America. Right, if you live in America, right? if you live in the USA and you got 900 bucks in your pocket and you say, you know what? Let me go get the iPhone 14 Plus over the 13 Pro Max. You're a fucking idiot. Now, some of the flack that I caught was people saying, well, you know, the iPhone 14 Plus, it's a lot lighter. I don't care about the cameras. I don't care about the battery. I don't care about having a better, you know, uh, uh, all around better phone. I want a phone that's lighter. To me, that's one of the most bullshit cop-out excuses. Now, I understand a lot of y'all so on Apple's nuts, y'all swinging from the nutsack so hard that you just can't see the, what's right in front of your eyes. But let me break it down for you like this. If you think that the iPhone 14 Plus is that much lighter, is that much lighter than the 13 Pro Max, look, it is lighter, but it's not like, oh, oh, I can barely lift this phone. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, oh, this is paper thin. If I put these on a scale right now, this one would only be a couple of grams, maybe a little tiny bit heavier. You put a case on both of these phones, they're gonna feel the same. If that's your excuse, okay, let me get the 14 plus, let me spend my 900 bucks because this phone is lighter. If that's your excuse for buying this over this, I stand by my statement, you're a fucking idiot. Now look, I don't tell nobody how to spend their money, do whatever you want. Okay, you come to my channel for my personal opinion, that's my opinion. Don't be a fucking idiot. Get a 13 Pro Max on eBay, brand new, or take a chance and get one even cheaper used and get a better phone. This phone right here for 900 bucks, this is an iPhone 13, okay, so it should have last year's prices. This is an iPhone 14 Plus, which is really a 13, an older phone with a new phone price tag. That's trash. Okay, shoes. Oh, let me file these out the way. She was dropping your little friends. <laughs> she, she was bringing her little friends to the party. I don't even want to see this phone in the frame. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know. Let me calm down. Okay. So now, as usual, I got to talk about everything that I don't like, and then we'll get into everything that I do like. Now, also, 
When I talk about everything that I don't like, you're gonna see me pulling out other phones. Okay, this is not a comparison video, but I don't like to just say, oh, I don't like this. If I tell you I don't like something, I wanna tell you exactly why I don't like it, and I wanna show you a different product that has the feature that I don't like, okay, about an iPhone, but maybe another uh, product has it. I'm making a consumer review, and you as a consumer need to know that there's options. You don't have to just settle for an iPhone, okay? You don't have to just take Tim Apple's word on whatever they're saying, and that's law. No, that's not. You got features, you got choices, you got options, and that's what I'm gonna show you. So let's talk about everything that I don't like. Number one, the price. 1,600 bucks for one terabyte. That's too goddamn high. All right, that's TGH, that's too goddamn high. Look, here's my pricing. Now, I understand you gotta pay to play, but here's how I think it should be priced. Which, one more side note, I might as well get this out the way too. iPhone 14 Pro, everything is exactly the same, so I don't have to make two separate videos. It's just a smaller phone with a smaller battery. So we can just move this out the way too. This video is all about iPhone 14 Pro Max. Let's keep it like that. I would say the pricing should be as follows. 1,000 bucks for 128 gigs. Now everybody knows if you got an iPhone 128 gigs, <laughs> that ain't really that much. All right, if you're shooting 4K video, you're downloading apps, you're gonna breeze through that. 128 gig iPhone is perfect for somebody who already got a Galaxy, and now you wanna have an iPhone, you wanna be two phones Nelson. I get it. So 128 gigs, that might be enough. But it should be 1,000 bucks for 128 gigs. Then I say 1,100 bucks for 256, 1,200 bucks for 512, and 1,400 bucks for one terabyte. That should be the pricing. 1,600 bucks, that's TGH. Now look, let me show you something. I understand you gotta pay to play. But just because you gotta pay to play don't mean you gotta like it. Here's a perfect example. Now the other night, let me pull up, let me let me go to my wallet real quick. I wanna show y'all something. Here's a perfect example. Now the other night I took my, you know, I took my sister out to dinner and her boyfriend. Let me show you. Let's let's go to um let's go to my card real quick. I wanna show y'all something real quick. <laughs> let me go to my good. This is exactly why I say you gotta pay to play, but you ain't gotta like it. Watch this. Okay, now look at this. This is the perfect example. So I took my sister out, uh, me, my sister, and her boyfriend. I told them, I'll take y'all to dinner. It's on me. Pick a restaurant. So they picked Old Homestead. I had old, old Homestead Steakhouse, fancy, fancy restaurant in Manhattan. Okay, cool. So I got there early. I ordered two drinks. All right, so for my two drinks, 49 bucks. Then for dinner, between me, my sister, and her boyfriend, appetizers, entree, a couple of drinks. Both of them had dessert. 704 bucks. That's too goddamn high. But look, just because the price is too high doesn't mean that I don't like it. I just don't like the price. I did like the food. Okay, I like the company, the ambiance. Everything was on point, but I didn't like the price. Okay, so just because I complain about the prices doesn't mean I can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? Just because you complain, you should have the same attitude also. Just because you complain about the price on something doesn't mean you can't afford it. It just means you don't like the price, but you gotta pay to play. So again, live your life. If you're gonna spend 1600 bucks, this is one of those phones that I would recommend for 1600 bucks. This and this, maybe a Fold, maybe Asus ROG 6 Pro. Those are phones that are worth the price, but I don't like the price. Now, speaking of not liking the price, why don't I like the price? The next couple of things that I'm gonna talk about, wh uh, why I don't like about this iPhone, deals with the price also. Next, the presentation. Now, say you do run out and you spend 1600 bucks and you get yourself a one terabyte Thanos purple iPhone 14 Pro Max. This is your presentation. <sighs> Come on, do I need to say it? This presentation is garbage. Now, we're not even gonna talk about Apple trying to save the environment and all of that bullshit. Even if this presentation right here Maybe put the box in the shape of an apple. Maybe do something a little bit more fancy to give you a better experience. Life is all about experiences. When you spend 1600 bucks and you unbox this iPhone, you're not gonna remember this experience. Now let me give you a perfect example of an unboxing experience on a phone that of course, the same exact price. Asus ROG 6 Pro. Look at this presentation, now you see it slides open. 
came with the certificate of authenticity, your road card, had some AR options that you pull out the camera, the box turns into a movie. This is a presentation right here. Okay, y'all seen me review the Vivo, okay, the uh, X-Note. That's a presentation. This right here, this presentation is trash for over a thousand bucks. It's not memorable. Okay, so Apple, they need to step up the presentations. Look, again, I'm a consumer just like you. All of these phones I bought with my own money. When you spend your money, you don't want to be presented with some shit like this. Imagine It's the same as if they wrapped it up in a tissue and was like, here, here's your phone. Blow your nose on the way out the door. You know, this is not memorable. You want to have a nice unboxing experience. Oh, look at this. Apple certificate of authenticity. Maybe a little thank you card. I did give you one Apple sticker and that's it. Come on. The presentation is trash. I don't like that. Next. All right, let's keep it moving. Next. Speaking of presentation and speaking about not liking about the price, no charge in the box. All right, now that's kind of garbage. Again, let's pull out some more phones. 700 bucks. Okay. Xiaomi 12T Pro. You got the charger in the box with a case. Y'all seen the Vivo X Note video? That phone came with a case, the dongle, a charger, headphones. 1600 bucks. This needs to have a charger in the box. It needs to have the dongle in the box. They need to stop being cheap. Throw a little silicone case in the box. Okay? Now look, they used to throw headphones in the box. Throw in some wired headphones. I understand the environment and all of that shit, but you should demand more. I'm demanding more. Okay, I'm demanding more. I want y'all to do the same. If we all just sit back and be complacent about this shit, nobody talk about it, they think this is okay. Apple, this is not okay. Okay, this is not okay. Put the fucking charger in the box, put the dongle in the box, headphones, and a case. If you could get that for 700 bucks, you should be able to get that for 1700 bucks or 1600 bucks. Let's keep it moving. Next, now here's something I don't like about this phone. No fast charge. Now, 27 watt charging, okay, that is kind of fast. <laughs> that is kind of, air quotes, that is kind of fast. This phone charges from zero to 50% in 30 minutes. Now, if you think about it on the big scheme, <laughs> in the big scheme of things, look at a phone like this. All right, now the 12T Pro, this phone charges from zero to 100% in 18 minutes. Y'all seen the, uh, the, um, the OnePlus 10T? 18 minutes. This phone right here, 18 minutes. Y'all seen the Vivo IQ 90? 18 minutes. Apple and Samsung. All right, it's not just on Apple. We're going to call out Samsung too. 25 watt, 35 watt, 45 watt charging. Those days is over. This is 120 watt fast charging. I think right now, 67 watts that you've seen on the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. All right, 67 watts. That should be the minimum if you don't want to press it and put it all the way up to 120 watts because these phones don't have wireless charge, so we got to throw that out there too. But there is phones. I happen to have one right here somewhere. I'm not even going to pull it out. But, oh, here it is right here. 120 watt fast charge with wireless charge. So that's not an excuse. Oh, well, you're getting fast charge, but no wireless charge. There's phones with 120 watt fast wireless charge, uh, fast charge and wireless charge. And same thing, fast wireless charge. These new Xiaomi phones, they're coming out with 50 watt wireless charge. So you're charging your Galaxies and uh, your, your, your Androids. You're charging your Androids wirelessly faster than you're charging your iPhone wired. Apple, we need faster charging. And again, this brings me back to no charge in the box. Everybody talking about, oh, you know, you probably got your old iPhone charger from your iPhone 8 or your iPhone 9, your iPhone 10. Those are 15 or 20 watt charges. If you want to enjoy the 27 watt fast charge on the iPhone, you're going to have to buy a new charger. I think Apple should give you, now look, I understand if you want to be on some environmental shit, I get it. But Apple should give you the option when you're buying a phone, there should be a little box that you check. Do you want a charger? And you could check yes or check no, I want to save the environment, keep the charger. Do you want a fancy presentation? Check yes. Or do you want this bullshit right here? Check no. I guarantee you, everybody's going to check. I want a charger. Everybody's going to check. I want the presentation with the case, the dongle, the headphones, and the charger. Okay, so I would say 
50 watts. I, I'm not gonna go crazy and say Apple needs to jump out the window with a 100 watt fast charging, but 50 watts. In this day and age, it shouldn't take you more than an hour to fully charge your phone. Other companies are showing you and proving that you don't have to wait that long. Next, here's another thing I don't like about the new iPhones, this whole eSIM. All right, let's talk about the eSIM. Now, here's my personal experience. When I first got my 14 Pro Max and I had my, here it is right here, my old iPhone 13 Pro Max for, on T-Mobile, to switch over to T-Mobile, all right, from the 13 to the 14, it was super easy. I'm gonna give them credit for that. The eSIM made it super easy. I didn't have to talk to nobody on the phone. As I was setting up the phone, it said, do you wanna transfer your number over? The number popped up, press one button, it transferred right over. So the eSIM, it wasn't the biggest deal. I didn't feel like I hated it like that until I got to thinking, well, wait a minute. Now what happens when, I gotta bring up those names again, maybe you're two phones Nelson, okay? Three phones Flanahan, four phones O'Reilly, okay? <laughs> you might be six phones McGillicuddy. What happens when you got another phone and you're using your iPhone 14 Pro Max today and tomorrow, you know what? I wanna use my Galaxy. Having the eSIM is not as easy as just popping out the SIM and popping it into this one. That's what I do with my AT&T phones all the time. Today, I wanna use this phone. Tomorrow, I wanna use an Oppo. The day after that, I wanna use a ROG phone. I wanna be able to just pop out the SIM and switch. Now, if you travel out of the country, this is gonna be annoying. Okay, you go overseas, you go to one of those little boutiques, you buy a little SIM card, drop it in the phone, and you're good to go. Now with the eSIMs, you gotta start getting on the phone, you gotta start calling the carrier, you gotta start reading these little tiny numbers all over the place. I don't like that, okay? I don't like this whole new eSIM wave. I right, shoot, why you, all right? <laughs> wait, move your, get your paw out of there. I don't like this whole new eSIM wave, okay? I don't like that. So the eSIMs, I hope Samsung does not jump on that bandwagon because they usually jump on Apple's nuts when they just get a little bit uh, upgrade, a little innovation, a little more air quotes. When they come through with their little innovation, other companies tend to jump on the on the bandwagon. I hope they don't do that. Okay, so I do not like the eSIM. But again, I will say this, I shoes. <laughs> Matter of fact, oh, yeah, okay. I will say this, switching the phone was super easy. I was super easy. But I just don't like having that eSIM shit. There's probably a good reason to have it, maybe for security, maybe you lose your phone, it's a little bit more secure and all of that, that's cool. But for people that like to switch phones, you're not gonna like having the eSIM. Next, now here's another gripe that I got, and I'm still gonna keep complaining about it. No fingerprint sensor. I understand, okay, I understand you don't like that Apple fingerprint sensor from the iPhone 8. I, we don't, you don't wanna have a big bezel like this. I, we want bezel-less phones, but why not put the fingerprint sensor on the side? Okay, you see, like Samsung does. Look at the fold. Put the fingerprint sensor on the side. This way you still got the full display or put it under the display. Why is that important? You're sitting at a restaurant, you're having dinner, you got your phone on the table, you wanna check your phone. All right, shoes, you wanna check your phone. Look at the difference, when I wanna check my Galaxy, all I gotta do is press the button, I can check it without picking up the phone. With the iPhone, I gotta have to swipe up, wait for the Face ID thing, then I gotta actually put my, my combination in. Now, depending on who you're having dinner with, you might not wanna be putting your combination in in front of nobody. Somebody could be giving you the side eye. Right, somebody who has excellent scumbag peripheral vision, they can see you putting in your password. You don't wanna do that. And not only that, okay, not only about the fingerprint sensor, but Android phones have this. Have this, okay? You, 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 you could be side eyeing me all day, you're not gonna remember this. All right, so no fingerprint sensor, I don't like that. In this day and age, Apple, Give us an on-screen fingerprint sensor so this way we could check our phones on the table. When your phone is in your car, on the mount, you could check your phone from the mount. We want a fingerprint sensor, okay? In this day and age, phones need to have fingerprint sensors and face unlock. <clears throat> Google, now shout out to Google with the Pixel 7. They heard me, because I said, Google, give us a face unlock and a fingerprint sensor, and they listened, okay? They listened. You need a combination of both. Now, I understand some people are gonna say, oh, the fingerprint sensor oh, is not that secure and all of that. Every feature on the phone is not about security, it's about convenience. This is convenience. All right, I got my phone on the table. This is convenience, pressing the button, 
bong, open it up just like that without having to pick the phone up off the table at all. All right, so no fingerprint sensor. I don't like that. Next. Now, this is another gripe that I got with Apple. No reverse wireless charging, also known as PowerShare. Now, a lot of y'all hardcore Apple Mafia, Capo de Capos, y'all be thinking that everything that is on an Android phone is a gimmick because it's not on an iPhone. The same thing with the always on display. You know how many years I had people in my comments talking about, oh, always on display, that's such a gimmick. That's such a gimmick. As Soon as they dropped it on the iPhone, oh, now I get it. Now I get why having an always on display is so dope. Now I get it. It's the same thing with reverse wireless charging. If you don't know what that is, here's how it works. On your Galaxy phone, okay, you turn on reverse wireless charging, and now I can charge up another phone from my phone. Why is that important, okay? Why is that important, and why should Apple have that on their phones? Apple Watches charge wirelessly. AirPods Pro, they charge wirelessly. So why not give us the option to charge these products right from the phone? If you got a Galaxy Watch, you can charge a Galaxy Watch right from the back of your phone. You pull out your Galaxy Buds, you charge them up right on the back of your phone. Now me, speaking from experience, even with AirPods, even with my Galaxy Buds Pro, even with my, my, um, my um, PI7s, those ones I use a lot, if I got any set of earbuds that have wireless charge, I've never charged these with a cable yet. I've never plugged in AirPods Pros in the last year or two. I've never plugged them in and charged them. Every time I charge these, I put them right on the back of my phone and charge them up just like that. How dope is that? How convenient is that? Okay, maybe you gotta catch a flight, you forgot to charge your AirPods, you get to the airport an hour early, you don't have to go sit by some charger somewhere, you can sit down at the desk, I'm gonna sit down at, at, in the waiting area, you can sit down at any table, any restaurant, put your phone on the table, charge up your AirPods. Same thing, charge up your Apple Watch right from your phone. These phones have wireless charge built in, they need to have reverse wireless charge also. Okay, that is not a gimmick. That is a feature that I use a lot. And shout out to my nephew. Anytime I go to dinner with my nephew, the first question he asks is, yo, Unc, you got a charger on you? His iPhone is always at 10% for some reason. I don't know why. But he's always like, you got a charger. I always pull out my Galaxy phone, put it under the table. He grabs his iPhone, charges it up. By the time we leave the restaurant, his phone went from 10% to maybe 35%. Now, you're not going to get a full charge. But the difference between 10% and 35%, that could be the difference between life and death out here in these streets of New York. All right, so no reverse wireless charging. I don't like that. Next. Now, here's something else I don't like. No pause on the video. All right, this is so corny. Now, look, when you're using your iPhone, why can't you pause the video? Why can't you pause the video? Look, I'm going to start recording. I'm recording the video right now. Now, say I want shoes to do something, but she's not doing it yet. I got to hit stop. Now I gotta start again. Oh, now she looked at me, let me hit start again. Okay, stop. Now I wanna record something else, start again, stop. Now I got three separate video clips. So if I wanna drop them on Instagram, I gotta have three separate slides. I don't like that. Let me show you a perfect example. Okay, again, I like to show and prove. Let's pull out a Galaxy phone. I wanna start recording, I hit record. You see it's recording, now I wanna pause it. Let me pause it. Record something else, okay, record that, pause it again. Oh, now shoes looked at me, unpause it again, start recording. Hit stop, let's go to the video. All right, let's hit stop, go to the video and watch this. One video, now I can post this right on the gram, I don't have to have a whole bunch of different slides. One video, this is a software thing, okay, Apple, we want pause on the video, especially in this social media age. Okay, everybody's making slides, everybody's making reels. Okay, everybody's making TikToks. We wanna be able to pause the video. I don't like the fact that you can't do that. Next, let's talk about Zoom. Now this phone does have Zoom, it does have, uh, I would say kind of scumbag Zoom, but not the scummiest, but you do got 15 times Zoom. I right, 15 times Zoom. Let's pull out a Galaxy phone. Look at the difference in the zoom. Remember, 15 times zoom on the iPhone, you got 30 times, all the way up to 100 times zoom. 100 times zoom. Now, 15 times zoom, 
that's going to be enough to take a, 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 your, your daily photos. All right, if you got to zoom in and take a photo for, of something, 15 times zoom, that's going to be enough to get the job done. But let me show you the difference. Okay, now look at this. I want to show you something real quick. Look at these photos. Now, I, when I use my zoom on my phones, I don't really just use them to zoom in and take pictures of people and food and all of that. 15 times zoom, that's going to be perfect for all of that. I use my zoom as a tool because if y'all see, I just took off my glasses. I'm part, I'm part of the four-eyed fuck community. I'm getting older. I'm losing my vision. Let me give you a perfect example. All right, let's go to, let's go to my gallery. Let me pull out this. Um, I want to pull out the same photos. Okay, look at this. Now, this is the same photos. I want to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, look at this. These are the same photos. Right, now, these are my wide-angle shots on both phones. Okay, now I use the scumbag zoom as a tool. So say I want to check the parking sign. Okay, now, yeah, anybody who lives in New York City, I don't know what, what area you live at or what uh, uh, country or state you live in, but in New York City, the parking wars are crazy. You got to read those signs, otherwise you might get a ticket or you might get your car towed. So if I park all the way in the corner, I want to be able to zoom in and look at a sign. So I'm going to zoom in from the galaxy. You see, I'm trying to look at that sign that's on that school. Look at this. So I zoomed in. This is maximum zoom on the iPhone. And then I zoomed in. This is 15 times zoom. So now if I pinch it, here's what I get. Now with the Galaxy, if I pinch it in, look at the difference. Which one do you think looks better? I just lost that photo. <laughs> Hold on. Let me pull out that photo again. Now I, I, I could be editing and all that, but um, I want to do this in live. Look at the difference in that photo. This, this is the maximum zoom. I, so I did 15 times zoom. Look at the words. That's 15 times zoom. Pinch the zoom. This is 100 times zoom. And then I pinch it. Look at the difference. Which one looks better? Which one would you rather read? Now, this is just one example. I did a few more. I did some bus signs. I right, look at this. I actually was able to zoom in from the galaxy all the way to the exact numbers. So for me, Zoom is more than just a feature. I use it as a tool. I would like to see iPhones having, if this is 15, bring it up to 30. Bring it up to 30. Like I said, I'm not going to compare everything to Samsung. This is 100. Xiaomi has 120. Like, it gets even worse. <laughs> it gets even scummier on other phones. But I would like to see more Zoom. Next. Now, here's, now I gotta have, let me keep my Galaxy handy. Here's something else that I don't like. No split-screen multitasking. Now, I've been singing this same song for the last couple of years. Split screen multitasking. How does that work? Let's go to Facebook. Okay. Let's do split screen. Okay. So let's go to Facebook and let's go to YouTube at the same time. And we'll do the same thing on an iPhone. Okay. So let's go to Facebook and then we'll go to YouTube. Now, here's multitasking on your Galaxy. I'm on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Okay, this is Facebook and YouTube. Now, it doesn't have to be Facebook and YouTube. I could be on Amazon and on a different app to shop. I could be on Amazon and eBay shopping for prices at the same time. This is multitasking. This is not multitasking, going back and forth like this. This is fast tasking. <laughs> this is fast switch, but this is not multitasking. You should be able to look at two separate apps at the same time. All right, so no split screen multitasking. I don't like that. It's 2022. Come on, Apple. How hard is it to do split screen multitasking on a big ass phone like this? You got a phone that's 6.7 inches. You want to take advantage of that big display. Give us multitasking. Now, let me keep my Galaxy handy again because I got another dislike. Here's something else that I don't like. No home screen rotation. Here's what I mean by that. Let's go to my home screen. Let's go to my home screen. Here's my Galaxy. Here's my iPhone. Now you get in your car. I don't know how you like to use your phone in your car, but me, when I got a car mount, I don't have my phone mounted like this. I like to have my phone mounted in landscape mode. Okay? So now, let me turn on. Let me make sure I got on um, home screen rotation on this. Okay, let me grab my other Galaxy. I turned it off on that one. But here's how home screen rotation works. You go to your home screen, 
bang, and it rotates just like that. Now, sometimes I do turn this off because, you know, sometimes you don't want the phone to rotate, but I wanna have the option. You see, this is why I like Galaxy phones, the options. Some Galaxies, I turn it off, and some I turn it on. When I get in the car, I wanna rock out like this. This just looks better. And it's more functional when you're using your maps, you got the full map, okay? No home screen rotation. This is kind of, this is just kind of whack. You used to be able to do that on your iPhone 8. Remember the iPhone 8, the home screen did rotate. This is just a software issue. Okay, now, of, of course, you can open up maps and put it in, and put the phone like this. I'm not talking about just maps in general. I'm talking about just having the phone like this on your home screen, in your car, driving around. You might want to have it like this. I know I do. I like to rock out just like this. Look at, look how much better that looks in your car, especially if you mount this on your dashboard, okay, not your windshield, on the dash. You don't want to have it up this high. Have it like this. Okay, so no home screen rotation. I don't like that. Next, okay, now we're getting interesting. Let's talk about the Dynamic Island. Now, I do like it. I do like it. I like the Dynamic Island. We're gonna talk about that because it's one of the things that I do like, but at the same time, it's one of the things that I don't like. And not to say don't like it. Let me pull up something that's um, user-friendly. Okay, yeah. The Dynamic Island. It just doesn't do enough. Now look, you upgrading your phone, you, every, we, we all talking about dynamic island this, dynamic island that. You're gonna wanna use the dynamic island, okay? You're gonna wanna use it. It doesn't really work for too many things. Now I use it for music, I use it for when you turn in your face unlock on, you see you got the little face unlock symbol when you're going from silent to vibrate. Okay, you see the dynamic island activate. But it just doesn't activate what enough things. I would like to be able to use my dynamic island for messaging, I wanna use it for everything. And of course, this is another reason why I like Android phones better. Now here's my Dynamic Island on Android. You notice, as soon as Apple came out with the Dynamic Island, Android came out with a Dynamic Island app, which works better than Apple's version of the Dynamic Island. You know, now look, I don't, I don't wanna be shitting on Apple too much, but this is why I like Android better. They just know how to do things better. Watch this, now look, here's my Nest. I can hold on it, it opens up just like the Dynamic Island, or I tap it and it opens up just like Dynamic Island. Now watch this, let's go to the Dynamic Island app. This is how Apple's Dynamic Island should be. I'm gonna click on apps. This is all of the apps that I can use the Dynamic Island with, which is basically everything. When you're using your iPhone and you get a text message, it would have been dope for the text message to come up in the Dynamic Island app. I mean, in the, in, in the actual Dynamic Island. I'm, I, 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 how many times I'm gonna say Dynamic Island? I, like, I do like that word, but y'all know what I'm saying, the Dynamic Island. When you get a new text message, it pops up just like an old text message. Most of your notifications pop up just like old notifications. You should have had the option to forward everything to the Dynamic Island because you wanna use it and play with it or have the Dynamic Island just for Apple Wallet and Apple Pay and uh, music. And I, when I talk about the things I do, like I'll do some more demos with that. But again, look at the Samsung version, or the, uh, not the Samsung, I would say the, uh, the Android version. You see, I just got a Dynamic Island notification. I hold it down, that's my steps. I tap on it, takes me right to the steps. So Android did it better. Now, I would like to have seen the Dynamic Island just have a little bit more functionality. Let's put it like that. The Dynamic Island should have a little bit more functionality and it should work with more third-party apps. Now, this is a new feature. Everybody knows Apple likes to take their time with stuff and do it right, I get it. But let's not act like it can't be done because it's already being done on Android phones. And it's only been a week. It's been a week after the iPhone came out. A week later, I had Dynamic Island on my Galaxy. Next. Now let's talk about something else that I don't like, and it's not really a big deal. It's actually kind of petty, but y'all know they call me Petty Roosevelt. Look at the hold up. I got I'm, I'm, I got a little infant. I left my window open. Now I got all these little these little tiny gnats floating around, and I got OCD, so it's getting on my nerves. So if y'all see me go like this, I'm just sending one of them to hell. Here's something else that I don't like: the lack of innovation. Okay, if you had an iPhone 12 Pro Max, 11 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, 14 Pro Max. Basically, besides the Dynamic Island, visually, they all look the same. It's time for Apple to stop 
Stop being stuck in their ways and come out with some innovation. Try new things. You wanna see innovation? This is innovation right here. Look at Motorola. We come up, we got foldable phones. Okay, Apple needs to have a foldable phone. Fold's been out for a couple of years now, so every company pretty much got them mastered. You can't even see that fold. You can't see that line. This is innovation, okay? This is innovation. Now, even if we're not gonna talk about foldable phones, this is innovation right here. Look at the Asus ROG 6 Pro. Look at the back of the phone, okay? You got an actual display on the back of the phone that not just, it doesn't just work for basic, you know, just for animations. Let me put my code in real quick. You get notifications on the back of the phone. I mean, look at this. I'm getting actual notifications. Look, boom, there's another notification popped in. I got RGB lights. Look at that. This is something different. When I charge the phone, I get a dope charging animation. I mean, come on. This is what I call innovation. Even with these little bullshit Xiaomi phones, you got IR blasters. Okay, now that's, that's, not, that's been out for a while, but that's kind of innovative. Galaxy phones, you got the Bluetooth S Pen. You got on-screen fingerprint sensors. It's time for Apple to come out with some innovation and stop just giving us the same phone every year with un poquito upgrades. All right, that's my little Spanish right there. We don't want poquito upgrades. We want grande upgrades, all right? That's not grande. We want grande upgrades. This is not enough, all right? We want some innovation. Apple, come out with a foldable phone. Try something different. You see how Google with the Pixel 7, you got the cameras going horizontally. Something different. I, um, we tired of the same design, the same build every year. We tired of that. It's time to try something new. Now look, here's my here's my uh, advice for Apple. If I were if I was Tim Apple's cousin, all right, Jamal Apple, this is what I would do. I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I get it. Because right, we're gonna talk about this build quality. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Cool. This is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. They should come out with the iPhone 14 Pro SE. The 14 Pro SE, that's the iPhone with the secondary display. Maybe the foldable iPhone. Just something different for the, for you know, it doesn't have to be the mainstream phone. This is not, you know, this is not Motorola's main phone. They, they know they know this is a this is a niche product. They know that. But give us that option. Give us that option. We want to play with some new tech. Imagine Apple's OS on a foldable device. Imagine your iPhone with a secondary display. You know, some cool stuff, fingerprint sensor on the side. Imagine that. All right, so Apple, we need more innovation. Now, of course, I got one more gripe. This is kind of petty. Okay, I got to put on my Petty Roosevelt shirt. Color choices. All right, Apple needs to do better with the color choices. Now, for the last couple of years, we had gold, we had silver. And then every year, they give us something different. You know, now we, you know, last year, we had the green and the blue. That's cool. This year, we got the black and the purple, that's cool. But this is what we want. We want the red iPhone 14 Pro Max. You got the product red Apple Watch, okay? You got product red iPhone 14 Plus, the peasant phone. Why not throw this, now, cause honestly, I love this color. I love it. Why not put this color on the iPhone 14 Pro Max? Hit me up in the comments and let me know I would say, if I had to put a bet, I would say 70% of the people that went for purple would have went for red, including me. All right, so Apple, we need more color choices, <laughs> specifically red. Now, with that being said, that's a lot of things that I don't like. Some of y'all probably think I don't like this phone, but that ain't <laughs> that ain't it. That ain't it. That, you, that couldn't be further from the truth. I actually love this phone. I love it. Let's talk about everything that I do like right after this quick commercial break. All right, y'all, so we back in. Now let's talk about everything that I do like. Number one, the build quality. Now, even though I said I'm tired of Apple pumping out the same phones every year, but if you're gonna do that, this is the way to do it. Let me show you my favorite three built phones. Number one on the list, Apple Find X5 Pro, ceramic back, all one piece. I love this one. Number two on my list, iPhone 14 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, 12 Pro Max. They're all the same built. I love it. 
And number three, the Galaxy. I love the water drop cameras. Okay, the silky, silky glass on the back. These are my two favorite built Android phones. But number two on my list is the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the 13 or the 12. Like I said, they all feel the same with the stainless steel flat panel. Again, Samsung, we tired of these curved displays. All they do is get in the way when you type in. We want a big flat display like this with the stainless steel. This phone just screams premium. This is one of those phones that you're not gonna wanna put a case on, even though I recommend doing that. But when you get in the house, all right, when you get in the house, take off the big UAG cases and enjoy your phone. You're gonna wanna feel this one. And speaking of feelings, this feels so good in the hands, ladies, you know the procedures. All right, and not to mention, it is IP68 dust and water resistant. If you get yourself the right case and the right screen protector, y'all seen the Caseology video I did the other day, this phone is a tank. All right, this phone is a certified tank. So the build quality, A1. Next, let's talk about Face ID. Now, when it comes to the face unlock, Apple is definitely the best in the game. Now, I, I just, let me do this from behind the camera because I put in too many passwords. Apple is the best in the game when it comes to the face unlock. I'm wearing my glasses. Okay, we're just gonna swipe up, bang, look at that. The face unlock, it just works from every angle, whether you grow your beard or your mustache, you're wearing your glasses or your sunglasses or your hat or your bandana or your face mask, because these work with face masks right now. Face ID is the most secure and the most reliable face unlock. Now with Android phones, the face unlocks, they do work just as fast, but they're not as secure as iPhones, especially if you go to settings, go to your attention settings, okay, this way your girl can't get you while you're sleeping, it require, require your eyes to stare at it. I turned that off because I retired from the scumbag life. All right, I'm not a scumbag anymore. But if you live in a scumbag life, turn on your eyes where it requires you to actually stare at the phone before you open it. But Face ID, imagine how dope this phone would be if it had Face ID and a side-mounted fingerprint sensor for convenience, Crazy. All right, Face ID, or you want to call it Face Unlock, however you want to pronounce it, on your iPhone, your biometrics, they work flawlessly. And this is one of the things that I love about iPhones. When they do finally come out with a feature, they come out with it right. Y'all remember we had Face Unlock for the Galaxy. We had a little issues. Then Face Unlock with the Nexus. We had a little issues. People was uh, unlocking your phone with a picture. That's not going to happen on an iPhone. Okay, your Face Unlock, ultra secure. Next. Let's talk about the display. 120 hertz refresh rate, 2000 nits brightness. This is the brightest phone that I got right now. And me, I like rocking my phone on max brightness, even when you outside. Right? You could be outside underneath the Sahara Desert sun and you're still gonna be able to watch your screen display with no issues at all. You're not gonna have to get different viewing angles. Okay, if you're rocking this at max brightness, that's maximum nittage, all right? 2,000 nits, that's the max nittage that you're gonna find on any cell phone these days. I love it, okay? I, Apple, I don't know, but Samsung, oh, Samsung makes the displays, and I, I don't get into all of that shit, okay? We, we talking about the iPhone right now. The display, I don't care who makes it, all right? It might be Samsung, it might be somebody, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. I don't care who makes the display. It's right, though. The display is right. It's so beautiful, it looks amazing. Now I'm gonna do a little test in a second. When I do the speakers, you'll see the display also. Okay, so the display, c'est c'est bon. That's my Italian again. Next, let's talk about always on display. Now here's something that we could debate. Let me show you my Galaxy always on display. Okay, you see it is, it is animated. That's the race car status. I do got time, date, got my notifications. Here's another one of my Galaxy always on displays. Don't touch my phone. I just, Halloween is coming up, so I had to throw the, you know, the, the scary, scary one on. Samsung always on display versus Apple always on display. Which one do I like better? I'm gonna go with Apple on this one. Now, it's funny too, because some people were saying, oh, that's not an always on display. That's just a dim display. Listen, banana head, that's what always on display means. No always on display is gonna be the same nits brightness as your phone, okay? The, the, uh, these Galaxy phones with the 16, 15, 1600 nits brightness, your always on display ain't gonna be 1600 nits brightness and neither on your iPhone. That's not how it's supposed to work, 
okay? Always on display. It's not supposed to stay like this. It's supposed to get dim. Oh, I took a photo by accident. <laughs> it's supposed to get dim and chill just like that. So if I had to choose, I actually like the Apple version better because even if I put a picture, let's pull out. Let's say I got a phone like this. Let me get a wipe down. Say this was my picture on the front. Which picture would you rather look at when you got your phone on a uh, desktop dock? You got it on a wireless charger. Which picture would you rather look at? Me, I like to look at my loved ones. Okay, so this phone, if I, if I got my phone on the dock, I see Amaya. Look at cute as always. Okay, I got shoes. I might like this. Every now and then I got to see shoes. Let's see what else I got. You know, of course, I got my girl. All right, so sometimes I'm feeling lonely. You know what I'm saying? I got my girl just looking at me all day. Look at this one right here. I got Amaya on this one. Now, I, I did want to show y'all one more. <laughs> I want to show y'all something funny, but it's not always on display. You look at look at white shoes, yeah. White shoes with the passport. With the pat look at now this is on my 14, so no always on display. But she got the she got the passport. All right, she got the Yankee hat. Bro, white shoes is outside. Anyway, always on display. This was one of those features that I I don't even have to go back to five years ago. I can go back to last year and go to my comments. Oh, that's so corny. Y'all Android phone, people always talk about always on display. Who wants that? All that's going to do is ruin your battery. All that's going to do is ruin your battery. As soon as it came out on an iPhone, oh, this is so innovative. This is so dope. Now I can just look at my picture all day. Now I got my phone on the table. I can see the time and my battery percentage and the weather and my widgets. I can see that all day when the phone is just chilling. Now y'all get it. Now y'all get it. Might have took a few years, but <laughs> Apple finally did it. All right, so the always on display. Again, this is one of my clutch features because I don't know who in this day and age still has an alarm clock, one of those big old school alarm clocks next to your bed. I don't know if y'all still using those, not me. Next to my bed, I just keep my phone on a wireless charger like this. I like to take power naps. So if I only got a, maybe an hour and 46 minutes to take a nap, every time I glance over at my phone, I can see the time right there. You couldn't do that with your iPhone 13. All right, if you got it on the dock, you don't know what time it is. You gotta hope you got a notification at that very moment. Otherwise, which one looks better sitting on the dock? You want this. Now, again, like I said, we can argue in the comment section, which one do y'all like better? Do y'all like Samsungs and Androids always on display? Because they are a little bit more customizable. And on another side note, if you want this always on display, a full picture, you can download an app and get that on your Galaxy. This is another reason why I love Android phones. Whenever Apple or another manufacturer comes out with some software stuff that people think is innovative, give it a week and you'll be able to get it on Android via a third party app. OK, so if you if you really like this, you can do this on your on your Galaxy phones. And on the side note, did you notice that I broke my Galaxy? I'm going to show you how I broke that because I broke it testing this iPhone. So I got this broken Galaxy, but it was worth it. It was worth it. All right. So always on display. I love it. Now when I have my phone on the dock, I can actually use it, okay? Next, let's talk about the Dynamic Allen. Now I wanna pull something up real quick. All right, so here's a nice little list of everything that you can use your Dynamic Allen for. You got Apple Pay transaction confirmations, privacy indicators when the microphone or camera is in use, you got AirDrop file transfers, AirDrop connection status and battery life, you got iPhone charging status and battery life, low battery alerts, Silent mode turned on and off, Face ID unlocking, car key locking and unlocking, Apple Watch unlocking, NFC transactions, you got AirPlay connections, focus mode changes, shortcut actions, AirPlay mode and no data alerts, SIM card alerts, and accessories connect. And you also got Find My Alerts. Now look, after using the phone for three weeks straight, the Dynamic Island it is pretty dope, but it's not the end all be all. It's not, it's not, a, it's, I don't want to overhype it. In my day to day use, the only times that I really see it is when I use my face unlock, when I turn on silent on and off. Okay, you're going to see that. When you use wallet, when you use your Apple Pay, you get the big, the big one. Matter of fact, let me see. Can I, can I pull it? Can I do something to make it show that? Let me see. Um, Let's go to wallet. Let's see if I could do something to, um, Activate it. Let's see. Let's go to my card. Um, 
Let's see. I'm going to double click. You see? You see that big box just now? Okay, so I just I just paid off. I just paid off my card balance. <laughs> okay? So for Apple Pay. But one of the times that you're going to find yourself seeing it the most is for music. All right, so let's go ahead and play some music. Let's throw on um, Coolio, Gangsta's Paradise. Okay? Now, when I exit out of the app, you're going to have the music playing at the top. If you long press it, that's the full song, okay? You see now when I open up another app, it's still um still at the top. And if I tap it, it takes me right back to music. So it is pretty functional. This is the one that I use it for the most though, for music. But I just would like to have to see, I would like to see it on everything. All right, let me turn off this shit real quick. Bam, just like that. And I also, you, you'll you you'll notice it when you go to maps. Let's, let's go to a quick destination, okay? Let's hit go. Starting route to 56th Exit out of that. Avenue. You're going to get your turn by turn directions. Bond, just like that. Then turn right you tap onto it. Princeton Street. Bond, just like that. So let's get an exit out of that. Okay? So I get my turn by turn directions. Now, again, you've seen the list. It's going to work for other things. But in my day to day uses, this is when I see it the most. And when I get when your phone gets on low battery, you're going to see it. Okay? So the Dynamic Island is a fun little upgrade, but. It would be even more fun and better if it just worked on everything. Every time you get an Instagram notification, it should be on Dynamic Island. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, everything. It should take full advantage of that. But I would say it just looks a lot better than having that stupid ass notch. Okay, you see it does work. Let me look at the phone this time. Now I'm behind the camera. Bong, you see it is just unlocked. It does work for a lot of stuff, but it should be for more. But the Dynamic Island is pretty dope. Let's keep it moving. Next, let's talk about the processor. Now, you got the A16, Bionic, Supertonic, Titanium, Uranium chipset, but it's super fast. It is flawless, okay? It's just as fast as the Snapdragon 8 Plus Generation 1, if not faster. Let's try something real quick. Go to apple.com, okay? Here's your web browsing speeds. Bong, this is the full website. No lag at all. So as far as the processor for your multitasking, you can have a thousand and one apps at the same time. You never got to close. You never got to close apps on an iPhone. Okay. You never have to be like, oh, hold on a second. My phone is running slow. Let me start closing stuff. You don't ever got to do that. Okay. The processor on this is super fast and responsive. You're not going to have any issues at all. Next, let's talk about the speakers. Now I got to pull up my test video. All right, so I got the official Floor Carter sound test by my homeboy, Mark Rubier. Now, before I play the song, let me say this. When it comes to phone speakers, the iPhone has some of the best regular phone speakers that you're gonna hear on the market. Way better than the Galaxy S22 Ultra. The only speakers that you're gonna find better are usually on gaming phones. And speaking of gaming phones, the ROG 6 Pro, the best speakers that I've ever heard on any phone, period. These speakers will blow your head off. But let's take a listen to the iPhone 14 Pro Max speakers. Again, top of the food chain. Yo, sound test, top of sound test. Everybody shut your mouth, top of sound test. Time to test that quality of sound test. How's it sound, Floss? How's it sound, Floss? How's it sound now? How's it sound now? Does it sound big? Does it sound loud? You could feel the bass vibrate in the phone. Look, I cover the bottom. Look how loud the top is. That's one speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Rabier, again, iPhone 14 Pro Max, top of the line speakers. All right, so now that you heard the speakers, let's take a look at the display. Watch this. 
basically bezel-less, except for the dynamic island. 2,000 nits brightness, the supreme viewing angles. Amazing. This is how you want to watch your videos at work, or in your bed, your scumbag videos. Beautiful. I love it. Let's keep it moving. All right, so now let's talk about the battery. Now, one of the questions people have been asking me is, if you got a 13 Pro Max and you upgrade to the 14 Pro Max, are you gonna take a hit with the battery? And the answer is yes. Now, keep this in mind. 13 Pro Max, best battery in the game. Way better than the S22 Ultra. But when you get the 14 Pro Max, now you got always on display. Now you can turn that off. If you rock your always on display and your phone on max brightness and you're rocking your 13 on max brightness, let's just say for argument's sake, you're getting 12 hours with the 13 Pro Max. Instead of 12 hours, you're gonna get 11 hours. So you're gonna notice that the always on display does give you some extra battery drain, but not that much, okay? It's not enough to say that, oh, the battery is trash now. The batteries are pretty much the same. If you turn off the always on display, it's gonna be rocking out just like the 13 Pro Max. Now, 14 Pro Max with always on display and max brightness, still way better than the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So Apple makes some of the best batteries in the game. If you buy the 14 Pro Max, you're not gonna have an issue. All right, now let's do a little gaming. Got S49 queued up. Here we go. Okay, Asphalt 9 on the iPhone, okay. So far, everything looks good. Okay, same tap and hold the drip. Okay. Now, y'all seen on the Xiaomi video, I almost lost. So let me stop playing around. Oh, look at that. Oh, rap. Okay. Back up. Pardon me, sir. Oh, he's out. They, oh, they're not playing on iPhone. Okay, hold up. Let me stop playing around. These iPhone cars is out here racing. Here's my 360. Now this is gaming on your iPhone. A16 buying a chip, you already know. Bomb. Woo! I got shit. Hold on, now let me turn this off. Do y'all hear how loud this is? I right, the speakers, the display, and again, the processing speed is gonna be perfect for playing any game in the uh, Apple App Store. All right, so now let's talk about one of my favorite features and the feature that makes everybody want an iPhone, the camera. Now, whether you love Apple or hate Apple, one thing you can't deny is they make one of the best phone cameras in the business. Now, with Android phones, like the Galaxies and the Sonys, we got Pro Mode, so you got more features, more settings, more zoom. But if you're not into photography and you want the best point-and-shoot camera and point-and-shoot video, especially for Instagram and TikTok, you need an iPhone, okay? This is one of the best cameras for point and shoot on the market. Let's go through some of the different settings. Okay, so you got time-lapse, you got slow motion, you got cinematic mode. Now, if you got an iPhone 14 Pro Max or an iPhone 13 Pro Max, play with cinematic mode. It's gonna give you those videos that look like they were made in a studio. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, look at this Instagram. I shot this the other night when I took my sister and her boyfriend out to dinner. This is at that restaurant. Look at the video. You see the bokeh effect? Now on Android phones, we call that portrait video. Same thing, but it looks immaculate on the iPhones. Trust me, play with this feature. Cinematic mode. All of your video is gonna make you look like Martin Scorsese of the hood. You got video. Now with video, here's a dope feature. You got 4K 60 frames per second from the front camera also. Now, a lot of Android phones only shoot 1080p from the front. You got 4K 60 frames a second, and you can zoom all the way up to nine times. Now, you got regular photos. You got wide angle all the way up to 15x with the macro lens. You got portrait mode. iPhones take some of the best portrait, uh, portrait mode shots. Like I said, point and shoot. One of the things about iPhones is there's no learning curve. Now, with Android phones, you have to play with a lot of settings, and you, know, you could probably get more out of it. But some people don't got time for that. You just want to point and shoot. Your portrait shots are going to look dope. And you got panorama. 
Now, there's no night mode because when you put the photos, uh, if you're taking a photo at nighttime, it's automatically going to switch to night mode. So you don't have to go looking for a night mode. Now, of course, I'd rather show y'all than talk about it to death. So take a look at these test pictures and videos for yourself. So one more thing I wanted to mention with the camera is you have action mode. Now remember I told y'all I broke my Galaxy testing out the iPhone. Here's what happened. I was testing out action mode and I was running down the block and I dropped my phone. But look how dope action mode is. Look at the stabilization on this. Let's hit play. Watch the stabilization. Okay, now I'm actually running down the block right now. Look at that. It's like using a GoPro, ultra steady, and then watch this, bang. Dropped my phone out of my pocket, picked it up. <laughs> and when I looked at it, no screen protector. So I'm taking a major L, testing out this iPhone, but as you see for yourself, the stabilization on this video is amazing. Okay, so again, this is one of the best point and shoot cameras on the market.
All right, so now let's do the RDHS, regular daily activities. Now you just spent anywhere between 1100 and 1600 bucks for an iPhone. Let's see how it works in the real world. Now one of the major upgrades, always on display. So you wake up in the morning, you got your phone on a wireless charger like this. The phone has wireless charging. You might as well invest in the wireless charger. Now all I gotta do is look at the phone. I can see white shoes. I can see the time, the date, my Apple Watch battery percentage, and the weather, and my notification status. Now keep in mind, you can customize these widgets if you want. So I'm gonna wake up, look at the phone. You see the dynamic island popped up, okay, for the unlock animation. Now the first thing I wanna do, let's uh, scroll over, let's see the top stories. Okay, Putin warns of more attacks after explosions rock Kiev and other Ukraine cities. Okay, it is what it is. That's the Apple top news, but I like to take it over to Google. Let's go to Google. Let's see what's up. All right, what's up with Yeezy? All right, somebody come get Yeezy phone. He out here tripping. Let's see, the Apple Watch Ultra is amongst, let's see, the Apple Watch Ultra is among us. Apple's best watch for, it is definitely Apple's best watch. I gotta give him that. Let's see, uh, MMA fighter gets his lights knocked out. <laughs> okay, we got some new robots. Okay, my man Ronnie Coleman. All right, that's one of the OG OGs. Okay, so as soon as I wake up in the morning, I like to read the Google feed. What's up with LeBron? Now, there's a dope show on Netflix called The Redeem Team. I watched it last night. LeBron is one of those goats. Okay, we got X-Men movie. All right. Apple Watch uh, apps. Okay. Comfortable shoes in the world now. I was just about to get a pair of Yeezys, but nah. <laughs> Yeezy doing the most right now. Anyway, so this is how your Google feed is going to look. Exit out of that. Now... You do have widgets, okay? Now, not the same as Android widgets, but you got a whole bunch of different widgets that you can use. I really don't use any like anything like that. When I want an app, I really just go like this. I really just swipe down and type in the app. But let's do a little bit of work. All right, so I'm gonna open up my Gmails. Let's go to, um, let's go to some, okay. Okay, so we got a little Gmail right here. So this is my work segment of the day. Let's reply to some messages. No thanks. No thanks. Let's, let's do no thanks, bruh. No thanks, bruh. Bong, just like that. Now, one of the things that I do like about iOS 16 is now you got some heptics with the keyboard. I love having a vibration when I type. That was one of those things that you don't really notice that you need until you get it and you're like, oh shit, how was I using it all that time without it? Heptics on the keyboard. I like that. Another dope iOS 16 uh, feature, changing your wallpapers. Mad quick, just like that. Okay, I can change to all my favorite wallpapers. Say I want to have my girl back in the front. Bomb, just like that. And you can change your widgets. All right, so let's go ahead. The home, okay, so that was my work segment of the day. Now let's take it over to Twitter. Let's see what's going down on the Twitter sphere. Go to my mentions. Okay, let's see. You've been whole weird on response to defend Apple like you own the company. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let, let's see. Some see, somebody going in. Somebody going in. Let's see. Um, I'm putting you against Apple. Flossy Carter. That was goosey, goofy as fuck. Let's see. Um, let's take it over to the. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Um, kids chasing it. I right, look, man. There's a lot of controversy going down behind my uh, iPhone 14 Plus unboxing. Bro, it is what it is. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what Jay Williams talking about. Uh, working because these dudes and they feelings over, over my channel. Oh, so somebody went on Jay Williams' channel and started roasting? <laughs> Yo, bro, like, that, that ain't my fault. I can't control these goons out here. I can't, I can't control my goons. <laughs> my man, White, uh, why is one of my goons? I'm sorry. I, I can't control my goons, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, I'm just the one of the founding fathers of the Samsung Knights, but I can't control what they do when they get out in the street. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's see anything else. Um, simple and effective tech. Let me get to save that. Now, of course, you can screenshot stuff, okay, and edit it immediately. Okay, now I'm going to have to go re read this whole thread in a minute because I don't know what's been going down lately. No, anyway, so here's how your Twitter is going to look. UAG cases. Okay, so that's Twitter. 120 hertz refresh rate, it is what it is. Bang, exit out of that. Now let's go to TikTok. Okay, open up TikTok. This is the smallest possible okay. team in Okay, I'm gonna um, I'm turn the volume down on this. Now TikTok. TikTok, Instagram, these are apps that just seem like they work better on iPhones. As much as I love, I love Android phones, but they just work better. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about with Instagram. 
Okay, now this chick right here, yo, she be uh, scar lip. She be spitting, yo. Let me see. Hold on. <laughs> she be spitting, yo. She be spitting. Let me, let me get her like that. She from the Bronx, yo. She from, one of the things I like about her, too, is she'll spit some extra hardcore shit. Oh, uh, Amaya just, Amai just hit me. All right, look, um, she, she'll spit some extra hardcore shit, and then at the end, she'll be like, hi, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Sound like a real lady. I, I like the the um, the, the, the dual flows, yo. The dichotomy in her style. Big words alert. All right, let's see. Um, Okay, this is your TikTok. Let's see anything going down on TikTok. Okay, LeBron at his, um, at Bron's 18th birthday. He got uh Travis Scott. That's how you know when you made it. All right, when you got Travis Scott performing at your kid's birthday party. Okay, let's see. Apple does not tell you the secret iPhone hack. Let's see. Now, one of the iPhone hacks is the double tap on the back for the screenshot. Let's see. Did I turn that on on this one? Well, you could. Oh, look. I, no, I got mine for flashlight. I got mine for flashlight. Oh, let me let me do that correctly. All right, there it is. So you get, I got mine set to double tap for flashlight. I just got to get the hang of it. I don't use it that much, but it works. It works. <laughs> it works. Let's exit out of that. Okay. A little toys right there. I like that. Halloween in New Jersey. Okay. Anyway, so here's how you tick that. Oh, look, look, look. oh man. After the Draymond Green incident. Oh, don't do, don't do, don't do my guy like that. Don't do him like that. Don't do him like that. Okay, anyway, so here's how your, um, your, your TikTok is going to look. Not, okay, what's this, yo? <laughs> what, is, what kind of stuff is this, yo? We put about 100 cigarettes in there. Now, I, I'm in too deep. I, I need to know what happens now. I don't. Sometimes you watch a video too long, you got to watch the whole thing. Okay, well, that was it. Anyway, see, oh, that drink looked banging right there. I don't know what that is. A must-try Latin restaurant in Brooklyn. Now, I'm a fat fuck, so you know, whenever I see food, I got it like that. Bang, just like that. So, that's your TikTok. Oh, this was a little kind of greasy right here. Watch, watch after the handshake. Dion, my man, Neon Dion. Calm down, Brody. All right, anyway, so that's your TikTok. Next, let's do a little Facebook. Now, Facebook, I tend to stay off Facebook these days because every time I go to Facebook, it's a little RIP. Oh, now, what is this? Oh, look at that clear Apple Watch Ultra case. See, now this is what, when screenshots come into play, I, I think I'm gonna have to come back and check that one out. Yeah, this old, okay, uh, you know, this is the video, right? It caused a lot of controversy. All right, anyway. Oh, I just got this in the mail today. The Case to Fire Street Fighter case. Only thing is it's only available for the iPhone 13. It's not for the 14 yet, but you know, come on, I need that. I just got that delivered today. Okay, no um, rest in peace murals today on Facebook. I like that. Okay, so let's exit out of that. Now, let's do a little shopping. Go to flossycarter.net. You know, I got to take it to my website. Now, if I'm going to do shopping, you know, let's go to flossycarter.net. Bang. This is where I'm buying all my clothes from now on. Let's go, let's go to the merch. I want to show y'all some merch because we, we're going to really have to use this merch. This is my newest shirt. Okay, we got the... This is a family show. We got the, this is the family show shirt, okay? And of course, you know, we got all of the classics. We got the white shoes calm down. We got RDA tests, regular daily activities. If y'all like the videos and y'all want to support the movement, buy my merch. All right, buy my merch. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Let's take it over to Instagram. All right, let's go home. Let's get a fresh refresh. See what's going down on the gram. Okay, oh, ooh! See, like, you know, see, this is why, this is why you got to have situational awareness. You always got to keep your head on a swivel because look, look at this. You could just be going shopping to the liquor store and next minute you're in the ICU. Okay, uh, all this political stuff, I'll stay away from that. Okay, new eyelashes. Somebody got the eyelashes done, okay. Okay, now they're squaring up, squaring up with the Foot Locker. Foot, don't, yo, I'm telling y'all, don't be going up in Foot Locker thinking shit is sweet. All right, because you got to remember, people that work at Foot Locker, they, they live in the neighborhood. They live in the neighborhood, you know, you never know. You be like, let me get them Jordans in size 12. You could be fucking with somebody with some hands, yo. He look like he with the shits too. I respect that. Why did I go to the high voice? All right, foot, foot like a shenanigans. Okay, let's see. Uh, some video games. Oh, this is a family girl. 
Okay, this is matter of fact, look, let, let me show you. I, I, I'm supposed to leave this here just in case when I get to my Instagram segment of the show, this is a high quality, Los, I, I know, shameless plugs. Come on, I, I, I don't be asking y'all for memberships. I don't be asking y'all for too much, but I do ask y'all to support my merch. This is a family show. All right, let's, let, let's, 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 let's see anything else we need to see. All right, we got the, the Islam boys. All right, the Islam boys got a Hellcat. Okay, they got a new rental. Let's see. I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, this kid is 7'4". <laughs> Bro doing chin-ups. Bro doing chin-ups. Can't be that easy. Okay, now look, this is light-skinned dudes. Light-skinned dudes always be making videos like this. Light-skinned dudes, man, y'all yeah, need to calm down. Let's see. Um, okay. Okay, now let me uh. Okay, now this is uh, AZA Auto Wheel. I fuck with them. That's where I got my steering wheel from. Okay, now what is he going to eat these or what? Or oh, fake spiders? <laughs> okay. okay, fake spiders. Now, we, now we, like I said, we got, we, you already invested this much time into the video. We got to see the payoff. All right, so she's going to, she's going to, let's see, some spiders going to drop. Let's see if he let them shits drop on her. Is he that dirty? Let's see if he's, if he, is he that greasy? We in too deep, fellas. We got to watch now. Let's see. Bunch of fake spiders. Ooh, yeah, that was, yeah, that was dirty. I'm not a spider guy myself. I might, I might have fainted right there too. Let's see if she hooked off on him after that. Oh, she was just tight. Okay, she's, she's a good sport. Kevin Durant. Not Kevin Durant. Kevin Garnett. <laughs> KG, not KD. I love Huskies. I'm thinking about getting a dog. If I do get a dog, I'm getting a Husky. All right, I'm getting a Husky. This is a I'm a man fifth out here. Anyway, now, like I said, the app, um, Instagram, it works better on iPhones because you got the swipes. Uh, you got the swipes. One of the things I like about Instagram, like you click on something and then you swipe over. Uh, you don't have to press the back button like you do on Galaxy phones. Anyway, so that's it right there. Let's, who this? Uh, Julio Fulio got the grills taken out. Anyway, RDA, regular daily activities. You buy an iPhone 14 Pro Max, you're going to have no problems doing all your regular work stuff, all of your scumbag stuff, all your fun stuff. This is an all-around phone, an all-around great phone. Next, let's talk about accessories. Now, this is one of the things that I love about iPhones. You don't have any shortage of accessories. Now, if you go out and you buy something like this, maybe you got an Oppo Find X5 Pro, go on Amazon right now and try to find some dope cases. You're not gonna see anything from Casetify. You're not gonna see any Pataka cases, UAG, all right, Caseology. You're not gonna see nothing. Not too many cases available. Same thing when you buy Xiaomi phones. Okay, you don't really have too many cases and accessories. When you buy an iPhone, there's no shortage. I, what's that word? I, let me, I gotta use that word again. You're gonna have a plethora of cases and accessories to choose from. Now, if you watch my videos, I just did a bunch of different cases. I still got like maybe three more companies. We gotta do Spec. We gotta do uh, Ghost Tech. We gotta do Caseology. Okay, we got to do Belkin. I got a couple of more case videos that I'm going to wrap up this week, and I'm, I'm doing a special video of all girl case video, uh, all girl cases, because a lot of girls be hitting me up in the comments like, oh, how come you never have any girly cases? So I'm going to do a whole video of just girly cases. But I said that to say this. One of the best things about buying an iPhone is you got plenty of different choices of accessories. You, you and your friend will never have to have the same iPhone case if y'all don't want to. I could go uh, I could go a whole lifetime of an iPhone and use a case that nobody else got. So iPhone does have the best uh, accessories. Next, now let's talk about um let's see we got one more one more thing I wanted to talk about ecosystem. which has the better ecosystem Android or iOS? Now we could debate this back and forth, but honestly, I think Apple's ecosystem is a little bit more refined. Now the Android ecosystem is more open, and it's more open and lets you do more things because it has more third-party support. But when it comes to just basic ecosystem, V ecosystem, the Apple ecosystem is great. So you got an Apple Watch, you got AirPods, you got a MacBook, you got an iPad, everything transitions over to each other seamlessly. You pull out your AirPods, pops up on your phone, pops up on your watch, pops up on your iPad. You get text messages right to your laptop, right to your watch. Everything just works together perfectly. 
Now I know Samsung Knights, oh, it works the same way on my Galaxy Watch. I know, I know, <laughs> okay, I know, I know. But uh, but if I had to pick an ecosystem for, for, what's the word, for fluidity, which one has a better fluidity, I'm going to go with Apple. The Apple ecosystem, just everything just works. And this is the thing about our iPhones. To sum up iPhones, whenever somebody says, oh, you know, why do you like iPhones better than Android? Or why, why is Android better than iPhone? The thing about iPhones, they just work. You don't have to know your battery percentage on this. You don't have to know this is 4,323. You don't have to know that. All you know is the battery is gonna last all day. You don't have to know how many PPIs on the display. The display is beautiful. You don't have to know what company tuned the speakers. All right, all oh, these tuned by AKG, tuned by JBL. You don't have to know. The speakers just sound amazing. Oh, how many um, the, the how many the, the camera? You know, with, with the pixels in the camera and the crop. How does it crop it? You don't need to know all of that. You don't need to know how many megapixels on the camera. The camera takes beautiful photos. The iPhones just work. That's how I'd sum up this review. These phones just work. Now, I gotta answer one more question. Let's talk about the floss factor. Now, if you're new to my channel and you don't know what the floss factor is, that means when you go to a fancy restaurant, maybe you go to a sports bar, you at work in the break room, you got your iPhone 14 Pro Max. All right, let's do the Thanos. You got the iPhone Thanos 14 Pro Max sitting on the table like a boss. Now, here comes one of your homeboys. Okay. You know, they got the they got the Oppo. Another one of your homeboys, you know, he's a flipologist. He got the razor. You got your manager comes out with a big boy galaxy. Okay? You got the nerds. They got the ROG 6 Pro. Where do you fit in on the food chain? Okay? Are you on the top of the food chain like a predator? Or are you on the bottom of the food chain like a gazelle grazing on some grass? Here's how I would rank this. If you got the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you are a predator. You are on top of the food chain. You are doing it so big. This is probably the most trendiest phone. Okay, now when you go to Starbucks, you don't want to be seen in Starbucks with a Galaxy S22. This is not trendy enough. As powerful as this phone is, you can't pull this out nowhere. This is the nerd phone. Nobody know what this shit is. Look at these cameras. It just look like some, it just look like some extra techie nerd shit. You got on your mock neck, uh, you got on your mock neck, you got on your suede socks, you got on your open toe sandals, uh, you writing a screenplay in Starbucks, looking like a complete douchebag. This is the phone you want. This is the supreme douchebag phone. But this is a, a predator, okay? This is an apex predator. This is like walking around with a lion or a tiger in your pocket. Now, if somebody pulls out the Galaxy S22 Ultra 5 Gangsta Alpha Omega Supreme, aka Galactus, this is like a dinosaur. Okay, this is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the best phone out right now. Now, if you wanna sit down, everybody wanna sit down together, let's get into some phone wars. Okay, well, I got an on-screen fingerprint sensor, you don't. Oh, I got secondary display in the back, you don't. Oh, I got a 100 times zoom, you don't. One phone has something that none of these other phones have, and that is the Bluetooth S Pen. Now, I'm not gonna turn this into a Galaxy review, but this is the best accessory to have on your cell phone. Watch my Galaxy review if you wanna know the full potential of this. It's not just for taking notes. You already seen the remote control features. You already seen me taking selfies with it. You already seen me using the magic wand status. This is it right here. The Galaxy, this is the apex predator of apex predators. But if you got the iPhone, no need to be, um, <laughs> no need to be concerned. All right, you're part of the Apple Mafia. You're the capo de capo. Okay, you're the boss. This is a dope phone, and I'd be proud to pull this out amongst any of my phone savages. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm giving the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the 14 Pro. Again, a quick review on this. Everything I said about these, just less battery and smaller display. I'm giving the 14 Pro Max and the 14 Pro, a major, major, major go. Is this phone worth the price? The answer is yes. And you know, of course, when you buy an Apple phone, you don't really got too many choices, okay? Because you already seen, just on this table alone, you got three flagship Android phones to choose from. But if you want a flagship Apple phone, you really only got colors to choose from. Either you got colors to choose from, or you got years to choose from.
You know what I'm saying? But look, if you're going to get into the Apple ecosystem, I'm stamping these phones down with the white shoe seal of approval. These are dope phones. 100%. Anyway, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this. And um, I got to give my usual disclaimer. I know my videos be kind of long, but hey, at the end of the day, I talk to y'all the same way I talk to my friends. Okay, I know 1700 bucks because really 1600 bucks plus the taxes, you know, these shits ain't tax free. So you're looking at almost 1700 bucks for one terabyte. That's a lot of money. So if you're getting ready to spend a lot of money, I try to give y'all a lot of review. I try to cover everything I can cover, give y'all real world examples, show y'all some plus and minuses, compare other phones. I try to give y'all the, um, the full review that you deserve. Uh, you don't deserve a five minute commercial. You deserve a full review. And that's what I'm gonna keep delivering to my faithful, loyal su subscribers, whom, whom, I, whom I love so much. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Boxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time. 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know. Stream gangsters on deck. Get the drinks ready. No meat boys are left. Yeah. Special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat, Flossy underscore Carter. That's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I'll see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes. Pitch and roll. It's your boy Floss on that one. Do things. Enterprise. Spock here. Spock won the beam up. Everybody to subscribe to Flossy Carter for the real tech reviews. Now, Flossy Carter, we know you Flossy. Now, guess what? I'm flashy. Money may all day, the one and only. Flossy Carter, you part of the money team.